This is crazy. The good news is that the most diligent of you that manage your money the best are going to have opportunities that most people are definitely not going to even be able to think about having. Wells Fargo and Bank of America are saying that we are seeing a very similar pattern to the 1980s housing style market recession. Not like 2008 where the housing market crashed, which is very important for us to understand right now. US economists at Bank of America said, looking back at previous housing recessions, we think the 1980s are a better analogy for today's market than the 2008 housing crash. With rates likely staying higher for longer, we are cautious of potential turbulence ahead. After I looked at the data myself, I gotta say, it's looking very, very similar. Most people are saying, well, yeah, the rates are super high now as far as mortgage rates, but I'll just wait about six months or so and then they'll drop right back down and that's when I'm gonna buy. But what if that doesn't happen? What if these rates that we have now are quite the norm for some time? Or worse, what if they increase sharply like they have in the past? This is so important for you to understand because this affects all of us. Even if you're not considering buying a house in the near future, but especially for those of you that are even thinking about possibly doing so, listen up. And on top of all of this, the housing affordability keeps dropping like crazy, meaning that houses are becoming more expensive while our wages are staying pretty flat or at least not rising nearly at the same rate. These two big things and a couple other huge pieces of information are all kind of clashing together to build out this perfect storm that we're seeing, especially over the next year. I'm gonna explain all this information in this video and then I'm gonna tell you how I'm gonna use this information to get me ahead of most investors and how you can too. My name is Nolan Govea, my students call me Professor G, and I made this channel to make investing simplified. In the early 1970s, there was this deep inflation and even stagflation from many things here in the United States. And in the early 1970s, we had mortgage rates of around 7%. In order to fight the terrible inflation, the Fed had to jack up interest rates. Mortgage rates then moved up steadily until they were at 10.03% in 1974, before climbing to 12.9% in 1979. And that sounds very familiar and similar to what's been happening in the United States and all around the world over the past year or so. As soon as inflation started getting out of hand here, the Fed started jacking up those rates and that has led to where the rates are today, where average rates are near 8.5%, which to us seems very, very high. So let's look back in 1979, when those rates were at a crazy 12.9%, and that's the highest they had been in forever, but people were still holding out hope for some lower rates. Point. At that point, they'd been rising for years, so they had to come down, right? Nope. Interest rates reached their highest point in modern history in October 1981, when they peaked at 18.63%. Let's think about that for a second. Now, not including taxes and fees, on a mortgage loan of $500,000 with an interest rate of just 5%, one's monthly payment would be $2,684. For that exact same loan of $500,000, but this time with an 18% interest rate, the monthly payment is now $7,535. What? This obviously made it so that most people could not afford a home. That would be so much money just thrown away in interest every single month. None of that money is going towards the principal, towards paying down the house. It's just going towards interest. This then brought demand super low in the housing market, which meant supply was way up, or at least people that wanted to sell supply went way up, and when things are out of balance, that's not good. Now, one thing to point out is that in 1980, when the rate was at around 13%, people were definitely hurting with that high of a rate. People were barely being able to make their housing payments, but they definitely didn't want to sell at that point because they were probably going to have to sell at a loss just to be able to get the house offloaded. So they were holding out just a little bit longer because they thought that the rates just had to come down. Just because the rates were high though doesn't mean that they're going to drop. It doesn't just work that way. Experts were even telling people at that time to just hold for six months and the rates will drop. Kind of similar to how people are talking nowadays. But then, two years later, not only did the rates not drop, they actually went way higher. There started to be a bunch of demand building up, but not actual demand. It was just a bunch of people saying, well, when those rates drop, 
then we're gonna buy a house. And that's what everybody was thinking and that's what everybody is thinking today. But since no one was actually buying and everyone was just saving their money, hoping to buy when it does drop, that actually made things worse because when people don't spend money, then the economy starts to drop even further. And so that took much longer for those rates to continue to drop down. In 1985, the rates did drop, but just back to 13%, like it was five years prior in 1980. And then another five years later, it took for it to drop again, but only down to 10%. So let's look at the mortgage rates in the more recent years, and then let's think about what's gonna happen in 2024 and 2025 based on these trends. Looking at this historical mortgage average yearly, for the past 30 years, we see that the last 20 years have been really nice very much under 6%, and for some of these years, especially recently, we've had rates under 4% on average for years. If we look though at this chart overall, what I noticed was that there aren't huge drop years. For example, it doesn't go from 10% one year down to 5% the next year, or even 8% to 4%. It's pretty gradual, and though it does eventually cool off and stay cooled off for a while, it may take a bit to get there. So what does that mean for us today? That means in my mind that we need to be looking at these rates today as the rates that they're going to be for the foreseeable future. It does you no good to say, well, I know the rate's at 8.5% today, but in like three to six months, it'll probably go right back down to 3% like it was at. I don't think much will ever be like it was before. The amount of cash that was artificially infused into our society with the COVID stimulus was enough to overinflate so much for so long that it's going to take a while to catch up. And I don't say this to scare anyone, I say this to prepare you. A smart investor is not a hopeful, optimistic investor. A smart investor is a realistic investor and takes the data and information that actually is and then makes a calculated decision off of that. Rates are gonna be up for a little while and people are not prepared. This is why credit card debt is the highest it's been and people are living paycheck to paycheck worse than any time in history. It's so important that you keep your consumer debt low and your budget strong. The good news is that the most diligent of you that manage your money the best are going to have opportunities that most people are definitely not going to even be able to think about having. You're gonna be able to find deals on houses that were unfortunately foreclosed on or that sellers are motivated to sell quickly because they bought too much house or the interest rate was too much and it just eventually choked them out. So those of you that aren't drowning in debt and have to pay that off and otherwise have money to just be able to throw at an investment or to throw at your new family home, eventually I think there's gonna be some huge steals and some solid discounts. Now, if you're on the fence today as to whether to buy a house or not, just keep in mind that that rate is probably going to stay that rate for a while. It may not stay in between the eight and 9% range, but I don't see it dropping much further down under 6% or something, at least in the next year. If this is gonna be your family house, like where you're going to be living, and that interest rate is so high that it's adding an extra thousand or $2,000 onto your mortgage payment, then it may just be smarter for you to not buy that house at this point. It may be smarter for you to rent and instead take that extra thousand, two thousand dollars and be investing that or at the very least putting that into a high yield savings account, letting it accrue interest and then you'll have much more money to be able to either throw down for the down payment or for furniture or just having that money sitting there so that when you're ready to buy you have something solid. And outside of the housing market, certain stocks and ETFs are going to be on super value very, very soon. But even more than that, just being able to stay consistent and invest while other people are gonna have to use their money to be paying off those high interests or be throwing money into credit card debt, those of you that have money just sitting there and can invest it while others can't, that's how the rich get richer and that's how you really get ahead. To see exactly when to invest and what I see happening specifically in 2024 and how to use the S&P 500 and other strong ETFs to build your net worth, watch this video now.